city. And if you've never visited New York between Thanksgiving and Christmas, your life as an American is not yet fully complete. I'm a determined fighter. I got a heart and I got balls to fight. You know, I love this sport. I don't feel bad for my opponents in the ring. I don't give a about them in the ring. They're my enemies. I, I want to try to hurt them. I want to try to do anything I can to get them out. If I say I'm going to knock you out, I'm not going to go in there, hug you and kiss you and hold you and just play with you. I'm going to knock you out. It's something that uh, we've done before with Brandon. Brandon has uh, had that problem where, you know, the last two or three pounds are always the hardest for him to lose. The only thing I ate was that Sunday on the plane over there to, the, uh, to New York. The whole time when I got to New York, I was just sweating and sweating right away. Even that Sunday night, I think, Sunday night or that next Monday morning, I went running already. So, you know, I didn't eat nothing until Sunday, until all the way until actually Friday night. That's when I ate. That was the way I had to make 135, and it was just horrible. hard for this fight as he did for, let's say, the Peterson fight? Or is he just growing out of the division or, you know? No, you know, he's, he's, he's worked as hard or even harder. You know, we, we were in training camp with Margarito and, you know, everybody knows Margarito is a beast in the gym. Cutting weight and everything, are you are you ready to go 12? I'm ready to go 15. I'm ready to go 20. I'm, I, come on, man. I'm, I, my tremendous, I'm in the best shape of my life right now. The weight is not going to affect me. The next day I'm going to feel like an ox. You're talking to a guy who's right now not feeling his best I'm not feeling his best not right now i mean he's making weight so yeah. right 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 emmanuel yeah, i mean yeah, come yeah, on come guys on. say thing well, don't worry real. he's fine I, we, we've been around it for many years he's we're gonna do what's best for now, him. he's not the only one everybody goes through this you know we we this morning we see this opponent running in an hour or two, because I'm pretty sure he's got three yeah, or four yeah. pounds that's together. the problem with doing these yeah. things before the way he's not does. feeling like he's not feeling like doing it when I went to talk to Max, I think he said something like, this is the worst I've ever seen you. You're very skinny or something like that. I don't remember. He said something about Brandon being a 140 pounder and not a lightweight. And I agree with him. You know, I think Brandon is is too big for 135. That's not how He is huge. He is huge. How are they getting him into a 35 pound package? By the way, this is a sure it's a fight. Huh? Sure. Oh, yeah. We should pack up here. He's with a guy who likes to mix it up. Friday morning, the day of the win, we were up in the morning and uh, we ran for for about an hour. He would sweat and, and we were we were keep trying and we'll go back in the scale and he would still be weighing the same. It was just his body was was just so drained that he, he wouldn't be able to, to lose any weight. This time it was just impossible. You made it, Brandon? Go bam bam. When you're overweight, you have a certain time to lose that weight an hour or something like that. We found a really warm spot where we tried to sweat off, and, and Brandon did maybe like half an hour to 45 minutes of 
shadow boxing and I was inside with them doing the same thing, trying to motivate them, trying to get them to, to sweat. I don't know why my body wasn't cooperating with me. It was just not following what I usually do. It just, I don't know what it was. Honestly, I was getting frustrated. There was like a lot of people around me. I wanted to hit one of them. I was getting mad. If you can lose that six ounces, if it's your underwear, spot, take your underwear off. It does make a difference. How the f did I gain more weight when I was 135.6 and I came back 136.6? How can that be? That's not possible. He didn't He didn't eat nothing or drink anything. I thought I lost it. They moved the scale, and they were doing the 24-7 after hours. So when there was a lot of people on the stage already. So when they moved that scale, you know, the calibration of the scale, I guess it got off or something. And I was in the back sweating and everything, and they told me, wait a minute, we're going to fix the scale, this and that. I'm, I already drank the water and everything. I'm done. I, re I just don't have it in me no more. I was really pissed about that. And, you know, I couldn't let it get me down too much because I still had a fight Saturday. I got to pay a fine. Plus, they wanted me to weigh in in the morning at 9 o'clock. I couldn't be more than 147. Normally, fighters gain 8, no more than 10. And that's normal for a fighter that loses a lot of weight before the weigh-in. But uh, Brandon gains 20 pounds after he weighs in. The next day, he's 20 pounds heavier. It's not healthy. It's dangerous. And uh, we've seen the opponents take beatings because the, the fighters that lose all the weight gain 15, 20, 25 pounds from one day to another. I don't get nervous. Well, I do, everybody get nervous. They say they don't, but they do. In the locker room, I distract myself. I play around, I horse around, I horse play. I everybody in the locker room, my corners, the commissioners, everybody, because I'm t I don't want to think about the fight. The only time I think about the fight is when I walk into the ring. That's when I, I start feeling the butterflies and everything. <laughs> When I walk into the ring, I'm like, when they have the horses, their visuals like that. That's how I am. I just see my opponent, and the only thing I hear out of the whole crowd, I only hear Robert's voice. It's, it's pretty amazing how you can distract everybody, take, blow, like, visual, all that stuff out of you, and just only hear one man's voice. And that's only one man's voice I hear is Robert. This fight was supposed to be the least competitive matchup on the undercard, but given how one-sided the first two fights turned out to be, and given Rios' trouble-making weight and John Murray's aggressive style, could it turn out to be the best? Now Rios begins to get going early, and I wondered if his gas tank would continue to top up the way it has so far, and lo and behold, heck of a fight. I think we're looking at beginning signs that he might be running out of gas. Definitely slowed down. Those punches don't appear to have anywhere near the zip that the punches he landed the first no, couple he, rounds did. He's punching and moving in, but it's not with the intensity out of speed, out of power that he had. I felt good during the fight, but you know, you could tell that it wasn't myself 100%. Logic tells you that if the weight loss robbed them of anything, punching power would be on the list. My legs wasn't there 100%. Within the 
sixth, I think seventh, eighth round, I had him like, I felt I had him stunned after the round. So I, I was telling Robert too, you know, I got him, I got him, that round is mine, I got him, I got him. This has happened to every Brandon Rios opponent as the fight wears on. It's amazing that a guy could come into the fight in the condition Brandon Rios did, like a zombie, with that cutting that weight, and, and the other guy is the guy getting oh, broke. Murray's starting to take more and more punishment. If, it's the, if that's imaginable at this point. Took a beating. His, his, both his eyes was closing, and they still let the fight continue. Blood was coming out so much that a little bit was getting in my mouth, and I was like, ugh, you know, it was just nasty. So, you know, I just got to keep deal with it and try to knock him out and get him out of there. But it was it was pretty jacked up, pretty bad. I was just a little bit concerned into, into the late rounds. What if his legs give up on him? But when I seen that ninth round and, and his legs are not giving up on him, I don't, that's when I told him. Let's finish this guy up, you know, go knock this guy out. Let's win by, by knockout. Punches just keep coming from Brandon Rios. Earl Brown's got to yeah. take a very close look here. Murray's taking a lot of shots it's to the head in this fight. He's a good referee, and he's going to stop That's a right really there. good stop. Excellent. Just excellent. And, and what a performance by Brandon Rios. After a titanic struggle to make weight. DKO for Brandon Rios in the 11th round. And what turned out, despite all of the difficulty that he faced in getting ready, to be a typical Brandon Rios performance. I told Robert, you know, I'm gonna knock it out. And you know, I did, but it took me 11 rounds to do it. I think I could've done it earlier, but go back to the weight issue, that had a big cause in it, but I'm not gonna blame it on that. I just knocked him out. After the fight, I was mad, depressed. I was just like, I lost my, I lost my title on the scale. Nobody defeat me. Nobody kicked my ass to take that title. I worked so hard to get it, and I lost it. It's just one of those things that it sucks. As I'm young at the sport, and it's something I'm learning from. And I don't want to go back to that again. So I'm learning from my mistakes.